Um, thanks for the introduction, introduction, Patrick. I can spare some slides. As you see in the title of my talk today is Context is for Kings. I actually then rephrased it to Context is for Queens and Kings, uh, right? Um, today, we're going to talk why I think context is one of the most fundamental pieces in AR and why you should actually could, should care about context. That's me. Um, Patrick already introduced me, so I'm kind of skipping that slide. Who of you has been at this particular session last year? Kind of similar. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I'm fe I feel honored that you're here again. <laughs> um, Patrick Gellert uh, from, from uh, Qualcomm and Vuforia. Um, one of the grandfathers of AR. A round of applause for him. Mike, please stand up. <laughs> um, so I thought um, a lot of people actually would join again. Um, then I could just say, you know the drill. Um, I'm originally from Austria, from Salzburg. That's where also the, uh, the company is from. And Salzburg is well known for the hometown of being the hometown of Mozart and for this lovely candy called Mozartkugeln. Um, and if you know a little bit of German, you could do the literal translation, which I save you off. Um, but you kind of know the drill. Um, for each question uh, that we're going to have at the end of the session, I'm giving you a Mozart Kugel um, to you. And I'm particularly good at throwing things. So actually, I'm going to throw them to you afterwards. Um, so we'll have about five minutes at the end. We were kind of planning to use Slido, but um, the system is not set up for this room. So we'll just do a mic uh, Q&A um, at the very end. All right, um, I work for a company called Wikitude. Um, we've been around uh, for some years in the AR space. Um, we currently have an ecosystem or catering an ecosystem for more than 100,000 developers. Um, we're the number one independent AR platform provider um, out there. Um, and um, about 25,000 apps are powered by Wikitude technology, which in total means that it runs on more than 1 billion devices as of today. Um, they run Wikidu technology. Um, how do we see AR and what's kind of our speciality? How do we enable AR and what kind of do we see um, makes us different from other platform providers or SDK providers out there in the market? Um, we see that AR is fundamentally works cross-platform. Uh, we, we have been, or our SDK has been working since the very beginning uh, as a cross-platform tool across iOS, Android, and also soon uh, Windows uh, 10. We see that an AR SDK should easily integrate into enterprise software and existing tool, chain, tool chains. We don't see that it should be necessary to kind of learn an entire new way of uh, soft development using kind of a silo like Unity. Um, our SDK integrates quite well, also without Unity, um, offering um, the same AR capabilities. And we think and we believe that there should be kind of an AR platform that holistically looks at AR and not just being a niche solution for one particular use case, but for many technologies. And um, Matt, who is actually around here as well, um, he framed or he put out this uh, quote that there is no point in building an AR app or an AR experience unless, unless it interacts with the physical world in some way. And I couldn't agree more. Um, and I think one of the very prominent examples last year, and I think it was actually a bad example in a way, um, was Apple, um, which I shall play right now. Oh. No. Um, where they kind of showed AR kit and they entirely did not connect the real world to their AR experience. They showed a digital experience that had nothing to do with the actual reality they were presenting it. And I think that's not what AR should be. I think AR should obey kind of this context. And if you look up the uh, definition of context, it's kind of a set of circumstances um, or facts that surround um, a particular event or situation. And um, it's a very broad definition, but I think we all live in somewhat kind of a different context. And it's important that this definition is very broad. And I think context and Obeying context and creating context-aware applications is what differs it and distinguishes it from VR. And like creating games for VR is very different than creating games for PC or for a flat screen. And um, developers had to learn a different storytelling and different functionality how to create games in VR because you cannot be sure that the, the gamer is actually looking at this particular scene. 
um, and that things are happening there. If I'm turning my head and actually the, the enemy is coming from the other side, I need to kind of think of that and kind of work my AR experience in a way that this kind of works together. And I think looking at context and being context as the central point for AR is a similar par paradigm shift as this was uh, for game development for AR. Um, oh, here's the, in my way, not so good example. Um, there's kind of no con connects between this experience and the reality on this table. This could be on any table. So why do this in AR? I don't see any advantage, any, um, um, you, uh, any advantage, any benefit of doing this on this particular table. I think this game is, looks awesome, um, but I think it can be just played as a normal, regular 3D game. So what kind of technologies do we have at hand at the moment that kind of deliver context and that we can work off um, or use to understand the context of the user? One of them, quite in a way quite old, is geolocation AR. Evaluating GPS, evaluating uh, sensors on the phone, and by that kind of knowing roughly where the user is looking at in real world space. Customers are using that for kind of doing Pokemon Go, our, uh, Pokemon Go um, like experiences have been doing this already 2012, like the very first example here um, from uh, Ice Age 4 where uh, you were hunting through the Netherlands and collecting nuts. Uh, logistic and indoor uh, applications that use GPS to track systems um, or just tourist guides. Um, but that we know the context of the user, where's the user looking at, um, what does the user currently have in view, and by that we can ingest content and information. Second, image recognition, the ability to recognize images. Um, so we, in terms of context, we know exactly what the user is looking at, we know exactly the page the user is looking at, and by that we can uh, deliver the right content to the user. Some examples here, uh, Time Magazine, they have a special edition of Time Magazine that uses AR to um, make the content, the printed content, more lively. Um, display videos um, of Obama, I think this is one of the editions here. Second, markerless tracking, big trend in the last year, um, also following then by, followed by our AR Kit and AR Core. And that's kind of, an, in a way, an interesting technology because markerless tracking, in a way, doesn't really recognize anything. Um, GUAR and uh, image recognition, also object recognition, that we'll talk in a second, they recognize something. Um, markerless tracking does not. Markerless tracking, in a way, uh, what we heard before, um, virus systems or the ability that a device is tracked in the room um, freely. There is no really context in there because we just track movement, but relative to my starting point. And this starting point can be anywhere. Um, if I start my experience here, it will look the very same as I would start it there. Um, so where do we get context here? And we get it from somewhere else. Um, one of the uh, prominent use cases is uh, uh, home planning and decoration. So. Uh, virtual um, furniture, placing that in your home room, actually you are the one who is then uh, providing that context because you're placing this virtual furniture in your home where you want to have it and then it sticks there. So you're the one person, you're the, the person kind of adding context to this AR scene. Or remote maintenance, you have an expert somewhere else who is then giving you the context by highlighting certain areas that then stick to this uh, tool or to this button or to this lever that you need to press. So um, again, we have technology that you can share your, in a way, or you can, um, you have a way of tracking um, motion, but you get context from somewhere else. Lastly here, object recognition, very similar to image recognition. Um, we not just don't live out of paper and of 2D images. We wanna be able to recognize objects as well. Um, interactive toys, um, one of the examples, uh, documentation and instructions. Um, again, we recognize the particular part, we recognize that the toolkit recognizes the actual um, object, and by that we have uh, more context information of the developer or of the user what they're currently doing. And if you look at an AR, VR, mixed reality system, I rather stick to AR than to XR. Um, it's very high levelly made out of four components. A sensing component, a computing component, a visualization component, and a projection um, component. Uh, this is basically true for kind of any of the systems. 
Um, if you look at Wikitude, we kind of take care of the software part. Um, some others kind of take care of the hardware part. Um, and if you kind of look at um, what we think is the way to kind of the perfect illusion, and that's in, in a way that's kind of what we want to achieve, right, in AR, we want to be able to trick people into believe what they see. We kind of want to pass this kind of visual Turing test that you can put something in front of you and you cannot distinguish whether this is real or virtual. And so, so we have kind of some ideas for each of those categories, and I don't want to go through that um, now, each of them, um, what exactly this can, could be in the future. So I'm quickly clicking through this one. And I mean, there's a kind of a lot of topics um, that we still think we're, you know, there's some improvement, there's some things to be seen. I kind of particularly want to look at the computing part, and there on the right hand side, I've split it computing into kind of computing poses and pose estimation and into scene understanding. And if you look at scene understanding, recognizing predefined images, so image recognition, recognizing predefined shapes, all of this column is kind of the context delivering engine, if you want to do a say so, something that kind of makes the software understand the context of the user and his or her surrounding. And at the moment, we're just scratching the surface here. Um, if you use ARKit uh, or AirCore, some of our software, we can understand that there are planes but it's kind of it. We're not even understanding this is a floor, this is a wall. We're kind of understanding planes. We have no idea how this floor, this surface here, this plane actually behaves. What is the material made out of? And I think that's a huge difference for um, um, AR experiences. Wouldn't it be cool to know whether a virtual ball properly bounces off this wooden floor or this carpet floor, or whether I'm throwing a virtual ball into a grass and it doesn't bounce? Um, so from recognizing predefined images and objects down to semantical scene where we have a very detailed understanding of the entire scene. Those are single objects of the scene. Those are units, and we actually could label them, chair, chair, person, chair, person, tablet, person, on the phone. Um, we, that's kind of where we want to get to, right? In a way, you could say we want to achieve this, right? Um, and I had to have a slide, as an Austrian, I had to have a slide of Arnie. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense, but I had to have that one. Um, but still, in a way, it kind of, it transports the vision of quite of many of us, in a way. I mean, this is a still image from Terminator, um, and in this scene, the Terminator is kind of recognizing this object. And if you would like to do this with current SDKs or current technology, this would be quite hard. Um, the Terminator understands there are three motorcycles. The middle one is occluded by the first one, so the dashed lines. Um, this model or this motorcycle actually consists of movable parts. That's not so easy. Um, we have some semantic understanding. It's a Yamaha 236 with some items. So in a way, that's kind of where we're moving towards, that we have a very clear understanding of the surrounding, hopefully not used by killer machines, but for more reasonable use cases, but the technology in a way um, is at this core. And uh, kind of circling back, why do we do this? Why do we actually think that makes sense? And um, this is a hypothesis I've been running around for several years, um, and kind of comparing desktop, mobile, and AR implementations of the very same use case, in this way, Google Maps and navigation, and kind of the information or the information density that we present of each of those stages is kind of decreasing. In AR, we don't have a lot of kind of space to present information compared to a desktop implementation of Google Maps. But as I said, we have more context to work with. Um, and my hypothesis is that if you kind of add those two up, the relevance of the experience is a lot higher. And I think that's exactly where we want to go to, that you have more relevant content and not more content of the same, but more relevant content at the time. And that's the thing that we can provide to our users and your users, um, that we have more relevant content. Quickly skipping through that one, um, we will announce our SDK 8 tomorrow, um, and I'll give you a quick introduction what it is. There are some sharing and collaboration uh, functionalities in there. Um, that's kind of the architecture of Wikidata SDK 8. If you have been here before, you kind of can spot the differences maybe. Um, most noticeable, um, Windows 10 support um, for the Wikidata SDK. Um, 
a kind of better separation of our engines and our plugins. So the plugins API is a way for you uh, to create also computer vision related trackers or implementations that work next to the Wikileaks SDK. So we're sharing camera frame, we're sharing the information of our trackers with registered plugins. Um, the rest is kind of the same. Uh, JavaScript API, Unity support, um, Cordova plugin, Titanium plugin, that's kind of similar um, as we had before. So SDK 8 in a nutshell, um, I think the most interesting part is, is that Windows support plus what we call instant targets. I think that's uh, for you who have been working with AirKit and AirCore and also maybe the Wicked SDK is a real uh, interesting uh, detail. It gives you the ability to start a tracking session like you used to. We call this instant tracking in, in uh, ARKit's talk. It's, a, I think, it's a, a positional tracking session. Um, but you can actually store that and load that at a later point. Um, so um, one of the use cases we, we have in mind, you create your virtual home furniture. Um, you save that exact scene as it is. And two or three hours later, you present that to your better half, and she can kind of continue that. And this feature is also at the core of being able to share experiences and also to collaborate experiences. And that works with kind of any scene that is kind of trackable, um, that, that are most scenarios. Um, it includes an entire new instant tracking engine. Uh, we work quite hard to make it better in terms of tracking distance. Um, it's a visual only tracking system that works comparable to AR Core and AR Kit um, without the need for IMUs. Uh, to, to run on, which then means you have a huge, a much broader um, um, range of devices that you can actually hit with um, the same functionality. Um, object recognition uh, has been remade. Uh, we particularly looked at um, kind of a capability that you can track objects properly 360, um, and also some speciality features like uh, distinguishing mirrored faces that you quite often find on toys or machinery or symmetric shapes. And as a consequence out of that, um, object recognition isn't, will kind of grow in a way. Um, so, for, so far, object recognition has been targeted at desktop sized um, objects. With SDK 8, you can work with scenes that are a lot larger. So, we've, been ma we've mapped an object or a scene that is uh, 2,400 square meters. That's um, an entire castle that you can recognize um, and localize yourself in with very high precision. A um, couple of uh, computing APIs as well, or camera APIs. Um, this was one of the castles. Um, what I said, instant tracking, safe and load, being able to store and load instant targets later on. For, for all of you have used, who are using um, Unity, one of the things we've been missing out for quite some time, live preview finally available in, in, in the Wiki SDK. Makes it a lot easier to work with Unity. And let me quickly roll this video, and then we can go to questions.
All right. Um, let's do a quick round of uh, questions, if that's okay, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah. I think we have time for maybe one, maybe two questions. And also, is Tony in the room? Uh, please. Oh, yeah. There you are. Okay. Please check in with the mic. The mic. Okay. We got a question up here. I always give out candy first. What? Oh, sorry. Orange candy? <laughs> no, it's oh, Mozart. Mozart, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so thank you for uh, all of your contributions to AR. I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to the new release. You guys have really been innovating. Um, I think some of our favorite viral videos early on in AR was Wiki2, like the turtle in the parking lot. And, uh, really, everything you guys are doing is um, honorable and amazing. Uh, so I'm, I'm a huge fan. My name is Lex. I'm a developer uh, out of New York. Um, my main concern, really, uh, it's almost personalized, is that I see ARKit, uh, ARCore, uh, Instagram, all of these companies giving out slightly uh, smaller tool sets, but, but a lot of the same technology and, and completely for free. Um, how do you see um, kind of the future looking, right, as, as you still have to um, make money to do this R&D and these major corporations are in the space and you're like this underdog here. Right. Um, what, is, what is your strategy? I mean, and the tool sets are amazing uh, and, and very useful, but what is your strategy to essentially survive and, and uh, what compete for our business as a developer, right, when right. it's either free or the price? Right. Thanks for that question. I mean, this is one of the... One of the things I'm keep, that keep me awake, <laughs> and a lot of us awake. Um, I think you know we kind of try to innovate on that. On top of that, I mean, ARKit and ARCore are toolkits that are really great. I mean, there's no no denying of that. And um, I think Apple particularly is in a very special situation that they control the entire stack from hardware to software, which is, has some benefits that none of us who is just a software vendor can actually deliver. Um, but I think uh, still there, you know, it opened up opportunities to kind of build on top of that. Um, still kind of providing also a, a broader reach, which over time will go away. Um, but for example, the instant targets, that's something you cannot do at the moment, right? In the ability to localize and load it later on. And you will see stuff coming up, uh, coming out of that um, from, from our side as well. And um, there will be always kind of needs that the two big chicken outs will not uh, cater to. And I think that's our chance still. Thanks for that question. Cool, thanks. Another one I have. I have one more, yeah. All oh, right. It's, it's kind of easy. First row throws are easy. Yeah, I'm uh, John Eric from, uh, from Norway. Hey. <laughs> I'm uh, doing some work on the AR cloud. Uh, I noticed this uh, object detection box. Uh, what's contained in that? What sort of objects do you t detect? Right. Pre-registered pre objects. Um, okay. So you can pre-register them. Um, that's also kind of new in, in SDK. Um, instead of providing us a video, you provide um, photos of that object. We create a model out of that. You can load that later on, and we detect that. As I said, first rows are easy. Someone from the back, I want to have a challenge. There's a lady. <laughs> uh, OK, one more. <laughs> While Patrick is coming. Where? One, Raise your two, hand. Three. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> the last one. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask a more technical question. You sure. showed earlier in the slides that there are capabilities for AR based on geolocation, which is typically used for outdoor tracking environments. But your example was tracking indoor environments through ge AR geolocation. Mm -hmm. Could you please tell us a little bit more how Wikitude addresses this? Sure. Um, our SDK is kind of agnostic in a way, how do you do location tracking? So you can use any location provider that there is, being indoor Wi-Fi or any kind of localization. We're kind of agnostic of that. And there have been partners who implemented indoor navigation, or not indoor navigation, but indoor localization. Um, and they used an our SDK to visualize the points of interest and parts where they are. So we're not, we're not kind of taking care of the localization itself. You can use Google's uh, uh, GPS localizer, you can use whatever other there are out there. Sure. Okay, I have more. Um, there's more of this at our booth. <laughs> um, and also I'll be around. Uh, so visit us tomorrow if you want to have uh, a good chat about AR and uh, some Mozart Kugel. There is more of that. <laughs> Thanks.